at my fifth and my last point, what is got to be on the agenda today? Sure enough, at this moment, we are throwing money after the old stuff. All, most of the anti-recession programs in the financial crisis are reinforcing the old fossil centralized structures. It would be wise to go immediately for a solar economy. What would be necessary to do? Let me point to four pretty, if you want, no, let me make to four tasks. First, of course, to go for a massive expansion of distributed energy revolution. You know, there is a silent revolution already beginning. You have now 80 regions and localities in Germany that have declared to become 100% renewable. You have many, many villages and towns picking up the idea. So distributed energy generation in many places is becoming a silent revolution. Second, sure enough, in order to make that possible, you can learn, <clears throat> as you know, the, the most important export article of Germany uh, lately has not been Mercedes, but has been the simple idea of the feed-in law. That's basically saying that law is saying, well, if you as a small producer bring solar-based energy to the electrical grid, three things happen. The electrical grid is expected to accept your offer, has got to sell it from you, uh, to buy it from you, has got to buy it second at a price which is fixed, at least at the cost of you know, generation. And third, that higher price is being distributed among all electricity consumers in the country. So today, each German household pays one euro a month to make the expansion of renewables possible. And as you know, that is that if you want simple legal device has been the crucial engine for making the famous renewable revolution in Germany possible. Third, and let me only touch of it, we need a super smart grid. The electricity grid today is deficient in terms of renewables because the efficiency grid today, the grid today is not built for dealing with all the fluctuations which come with renewables. The wind is fluctuating, the sun is fluctuating, also biomass in a certain way is fluctuating. So to bring supply and demand into balance, you need an intelligent grid that uses information technologies, computers, to balance the interconnection of many producers. We don't have that today. We might also need a super grid because maybe the many small producers are not quite enough. You might maybe need some centralized structure to have a backbone, like offshore wind, for instance, or some people call for electricity from the Sahara. And last but not least, and these are all fields of investments that could go for a Green New Deal. If we put our money only there, then the financial crisis, crisis would be worth something. And the fourth point, uh, sustainable energy utilities, or in other words, let's get down to locations and to regions. Last week I have been in southern Tyrol, in Dobiaco, and in Dobiaco you can see how to do it. Dobiaco is, is, um, has reached an autarchy, if you want, in terms of heat and electricity. Because Dobiaco has built a biomass-based um, um, long-distance heating system, so they produce heat, and at the same time, they produce electricity. And by and large, Dobiaco and San Candido are 
autonomous in their energy. Now, that has happened in southern Tyrol in 63 municipalities over the last 10 years. Nobody even noticed with an effect that along with efficiency policy, today southern Tyrol, which by and large, I mean, for better or worse, is part of Italy. Uh, southern Tyrol today imports 60 percent less oil for heating than uh, uh, 10 years ago. Now that means you need to create structures like cooperatives like in Dobiaco. You need to create structures where people can share and participate in taking uh, charge of their own energies in creating, in using the localities in a particular way to make that uh, possible. Um, maybe if we find a possibility in a way to evoke social cooperation in places and to invoke something like, if you want, an energy commons. Somebody said before, a reappropriation of energy by citizens. Then we get a vision of a future where you can see that energy has much to do with democracy. It has much to do with local economy. And maybe going down that way, it can happen as our philosopher Ernst Bloch once said in Germany, he said, technology comes in its own only when it enters an alliance with nature. And that's what we are up to in this century. Thank you very much.